welcome. We do welcome you to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We are again uh, worshiping at the Yale Avenue Presbyterian Church. While uh, our church house is still damaged by the fire some weeks ago, we welcome you to this service of worship. Welcome, Welcome to St. Andrews. Please join with me, call to worship this morning. The Holy One, the defender of the poor and needy, calls us together now. We come thankful to be a part of this family of faith. God knows us well and calls us by name. We hear our name and respond to God's call. The love of Christ urges us to move forward on our journey.
Please join with me prayer of confession and silent prayer. Let us go to the God in prayer. O oh God, you call us to live in mystery, to walk by faith. Yet we long for plans with goals and schedules. It's hard to live by faith. You cause us to place our trust in you, to live according to your will. Yet we want life to make sense to us. It's hard to live by faith. It's not easy to accept your promise that everything old has passed away and the new is yet to come. Forgive us, help us to see. Assurance of God's pardon, God forgives us and sow the good news in tiny seed within us. We are forgiven. We can see new possibilities. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading for today is Mark 4, verses 35 through 41. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Scripture reading from the Old Testament today is from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1, and then skipping down to verse 35. Very familiar story of David and Goliath. Now the Philistines gathered their armies for battle. They were gathered at Soko which belongs to Judah. And then verse 31. 
When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for David. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You're just a boy. He's been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw and strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of the Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, may the Lord be with you. So Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail, and, and David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. So David said to Saul, I, I cannot wear and walk with these, for I'm not used to them. So David removed them, and he took his staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones from the creek, and he put them in his shepherd's bag, in his pouch. His sling was in his hand. He drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came out and, and drew near to David and with his shield bearer in front of him. And when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, My dog, that, that you come to me with sticks? The Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. I will give you flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you with the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air, to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. So when the Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward him, toward the battle line, to meet with the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down into the ground. Here reads, ends our reading of a portion of the story of David and Goliath. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks 
be to God. David and Goliath. Sometimes that's called a, a morality tale. That is a story that is uh, found in many, many different languages and traditions designed to encourage morality, to encourage virtue, to help children grow up properly. And if you think about it, if, if you had a children's Bible, an illustrated picture Bible as a child, probably there was the story of David and Goliath. And a picture of David, the young shepherd boy, with no armor, with, with nothing but a slingshot. And there is this huge man that is uh, totally armored, helmet covering uh, all of his head and most of his face, uh, covering his chest and his arms and even covering his feet. There, there seems to be no contest between this young, inexperienced, unarmored shepherd boy and this warrior that is uh, huge, is huge. Uh, the story is that David was the eighth son of Jesse, and the older brothers have gone off to the army to join with Saul in fighting the Philistines. And, and they are in separate lines opposed to each other. And this is not simply a, a, a battle like a football game on Saturday or Sunday. This is a battle for life because the Philistines are in Judah. They are occupying the Israelite territory. If they win, the Israelites will be wiped out. Those who are not killed will be made slaves. Their lands, their houses, their livestock will all be taken. So this is a significant life battle. And, and David just comes at his father's order to bring food to his elder brothers. And, and when he's there, he hears the taunts of Goliath. And he says, hey, hey, I can fight him. I can fight him. Now, Saul didn't want to fight him. His older brothers didn't want to fight him. None of the Israelites had the courage to fight him. But David, David would fight him. And so he went to Saul and volunteered. A morality tale is, is to have lessons for us. And the first one I think this wants us to hear is that God was on David's side. David, if you remember, had been anointed by Samuel to become the future king of Israel. Now, that had not happened, but David knew that God was with him. God had anointed him. And, and you and I are not anointed to be kings, and I hope not anointed to get into a physical fight with Goliath of this world, but we are anointed by God. In our baptism, we are anointed to be God's people. And, and it says that in that anointing, David was filled with the Spirit, as you and I as Christians are, are filled with God's Spirit. So the first thing that we need to know here is that God was with David. David could only do this because he knew God's presence. God is with us, and so David depended on God, not power, not physical things. David knew his own limitations. He also knew his own strengths. 
So he avoided his limitations. He played to his strengths. Saul tried to get him armor, but he didn't know how to, to use armor, and it just weighed him down. So he set aside the armor. He played on his strength. That is, his, his agility, his ability to use a slingshot, his, his speed. And you and I, knowing God is with us, need to ascertain how God has blessed us and gifted us with, with particular abilities and, and play to our strengths, avoid our weaknesses. David, David was successful because he depended on the Lord rather than physical power and he used what God had given to him. He was not bashful. He, he said, you know, I can fight. I have, I have had to fight lions and bears. I can fight. So he also had been prepared for this by his natural training as being outside. Of, of having to fight off animals. Now, that's not the same thing as a trained warrior, but he had the confidence that he could do it. This, as I said, is a morality tale to, get, to give us insights as to how we can live as well. But more than that, this is yet another story of God at work with human beings. This isn't simply about David. It is about all the people of God. Remember the people that came out of Egypt were, were nobodies. They were slaves for hundreds of years. They were weak and helpless compared to Pharaoh and, and his army of chariots and soldiers, and yet God was with them. And, and later on, God used people that, that were not perfect, that were not strong, that were not powerful. God used them. So this is a story of God's grace at work in the lives of the Israelites, of David, and, and of you and me as well. As we move on to the New Testament, we see that, that Jesus called together people that were not rich or powerful. Uh, some of them were fishermen and they owned boats and they hired people, so they probably had a successful business. But, but they were not wealthy. They were not the power elite of their day. And in fact, remember when Nicodemus came to see Jesus? He snuck in by night because he didn't want anybody to know that he was, was seeing this, this guy, this Jesus. And then later on, <clears throat> as the church grew, the Apostle Paul said to the Corinthians, Now you remember, not many of you were wealthy. Not many of you were powerful. Not many of you were highly educated, but God chose you. Out of weakness, God chose you to be his people. So this is not only a morality tale. This is a story of God's grace to, to all of us, to all of us. I think we can identify with David, and we can identify with God's people. Uh, but, you know, as we listen to these stories, I think we have to also be careful. We identify with the disciples and the early Christians. We identify with the people of Israel coming out of Egypt, right? We identify with David. But perhaps we should also be aware of how often we identify with Goliath, how often we seek 
power and prestige. How often we grasp after wealth. How often we are much more like Goliath. I'd like to believe I'm David. I'd like to believe that God has chosen me no matter what. But you know, sometimes I think more like Goliath personally. You think about it. They used to talk about WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Those people were the power elite of our society. As I've been reading American history again, I came across the Philadelphia riots of 1844. Protestants attacked the Irish and burned down a number of Catholic churches. And then there was the so-called 1855 Chicago Beer Riot. The Protestants, again unhappy with the Irish and the German Catholics, tried to deny them the right to have beer on a Sunday. And the worst of it was that on St. Patrick's Day, the Protestant mayor shut down the bars and the beer halls, and there was a riot. We in our society have had prejudice and people in power lording over those people who have none for many, many years. The Irish, German Catholics before the Civil War, the blacks all through our history, the... uh, Italians, the Poles, the Russians, the Jews in 1890 to about World War I, we have had a sense of superiority as whites, have we not? Now, when people talk about white privilege, we don't want to hear that. We don't want to think we're privileged. But I know I'm privileged. I'm not only white and Anglo-Saxon, my grandfather immigrated from England, and Protestant, but I'm a male, and males still make more money than females, right? Southern Baptist meeting this week reaffirmed that women cannot be preachers in the Southern Baptist Church. Males have power. And there's one more thing. White, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, male, and I'm old. Okay, I don't like to think of myself as old, but really, really, I get discounted tickets. I get Social Security and Medicare. There is something good about being old. It's kind of offset when your knees go out, but there is something good about being old, right? I recognize I have privilege and power. And that many times I act like Goliath. If you can admit to yourself the times that you too yearn for prestige and power and prosperity, and you too are a Goliath, what what can you do? I, I think one thing is to try to identify with the people who are the Davids of this world. Try to to find someone who is not powerful or wealthy or well-educated. Find someone who perhaps is not even graduated from college and, and ask them their opinion of things. Find someone who is struggling to even have a house and ask them, How do they feel about that? Find someone who is of a different ethnic background and and just talk to them. See if you can begin to place yourself in that position because as long as we think of ourselves as being powerful, as being prosperous, as being good, the grace of God cannot get through to us. We have to recognize that we are 
the Davids of this world, that we are without armor, without prestige, without anything, but that we depend upon God's grace. David and Goliath is a children's story, but it is a story for all of us as well. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are tempted to seek after the things of this world, prosperity and prestige and power, and influence, and even though it is popular these days to think that we are all victims, we know that we, we have so much. And yet in your sight, we are still sinners saved by grace. O oh Lord, open us up to being anointed and filled with your Spirit, as was David, that we too may serve you, as did David. In the name of our Lord Jesus, who emptied himself, gave himself up even to death, we pray. Amen.
Once again, we are glad that you joined with us in worship this day. As we come together, we are reminded that we are all part of the body of Christ. We are all part of his people. And we are blessed and empowered, as was David. And then we go out our separate ways to serve. And as you go, we pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, communion, fellowship of the Holy Spirit will go with you day by day. In Christ's name, amen.